Hello everyone. So in this session, we'll continue the discussion on uh, the friction because in the previous session, Professor Yogesh Kumar KJ has uh, started with the second module of tribology that is on friction and where, where in the last uh, session, uh, he has uh, discussed about uh, the friction, definition of the friction, then uh, the causes of the friction and uh, the modes of uh, measuring the friction. So he has discussed about friction, then causes of the friction, then modes of measuring the friction. So we will continue our discussion on the friction by taking the loss of friction, then adhesion theory and flowing theory in this uh, session. So there are uh, three laws of uh, friction. Out of the three laws, the first two laws are introduced by the scientist uh, Amontas, Amontans and the third law is introduced by Coulomb. Okay? So the first two laws states that the friction, the friction between the rubbing surface is independent of the apparent area of contact. The friction between the rubbing surface is uh, independent of the apparent area of contact. That is the first law. The second law states that the friction between the rubbing surface is directly proportional to the normal load to the normal load between the contacting bodies. And the third law states that the kinetic friction between the rubbing surface is nearly independent of the sliding velocity or the speed of the sliding. These are all the three laws. So coming to the first law, first law states that the friction is independent of apparent uh, area of contact between the contacting bodies. So you need to uh, concentrate on apparent area of contact here. So what do you mean by apparent area of contact? And if there is an apparent area of contact, then there should be a real area of contact. Of course, whenever the uh, material meets or starts rubbing, there will be apparent area as well as there will be real area of contact. Because none of the material is smooth or none of the surface is uh, finished with uh, perfect uh, surface uh, uh, finish, okay? There is uh, no such uh, smooth finished surfaces because you can see in the first image, the first image is the specimen prepared for the observation under scanning electron microscope. So the first image, what you are seeing is uh, the specimen which is uh, uh, polished by emery sheets first with the help of uh, grid sizes of 800, 1000, 1200 up to 1600 and 2000 grid size uh, emery sheets. It is polished at the surface. Then it is again uh, subjected to polishing machine where the fine uh, velvet, paper, uh, velvet uh, cloth is used to polish the surface. So you can see the first image where it is uh, for the naked eye it is appearing that it is smooth the surface is smooth but if you see the next image that is figure 2 if you see the figure 2 that is the image obtained through scanning electron microscope so that is the uh, same image of figure 1 so in the figure 1 you can see the difference between figure 1 and figure 2 so in figure 1 it is the smooth surface for the naked eye but in the figure 2 it is for the uh, eye of uh, the scanning electron microscope where you can find the surface is rough okay so uh, you can observe the surface roughness and you can observe some of the dark parts there so that dark spots will represent the porosity of the material and you can uh, <coughs> observe few of the asperities tip of the asperities you can observe so in the second uh, image figure 2 you can observe the surface is rough but for the naked eye in the figure 1 it is smooth okay so for the naked eye whatever the material is appearing smooth or it is perfect in uh, surface finish but for the 
optical microscope or scanning electron microscope or maybe uh, transmission electron microscope this, that particular uh, surface will be having some asperities or roughness on the surface. So, you cannot uh, expect uh, any of the material with uh, perfect surface finish. Okay? So, if you just have a look at the first case, the friction is independent of the apparent area of contact. If I take the example of uh, a material, for the naked eye it can be seen like this, two materials mating with each other where it is uh, specimen 1 and this is the specimen 2. I will take two bodies in contact, this is the first body and this is the second body, these two bodies are in contact. So, for the naked eye you can see like this, but in the microscope, okay, if you use uh, a high magnification microscope, then this contact surface may be look something like this. something like this ok so this is specimen 1 and this is specimen 2 this is for the naked eye and this is for the high magnification microscope so in the high magnification microscope you will find the surface roughness where these are all called as asperities these uh, extended uh, projected parts is called as asperities. This will be conical in shape, okay, or it may be circular in shape also. This is called as asperities, the tip of the asperities. So, the tip of the asperities will be in contact with the tip of the asperities of other material. So, here this is the actual area of contact, the tip of the asperities, and uh, okay, if I write it like this, this is the actual area of contact. Fine. So, if you see this through the microscope, then you will find the difference between apparent area of contact and real area of contact, where the contact between the asperities, tip of the asperities will be the real area of contact and here there will be a gap. So, this gap is the apparent area of contact. So, since this area is uh, not having any contact, not having any contact, this will not come under the rubbing, therefore this area is independent of the friction, therefore the first class states that the friction is independent of the apparent area, so this is the apparent area, the real area of contact is this one, only at these two part, these two material is in contact because of the asperities, okay? whereas this particular part is free from the rubbing or it is not in contact. So, this is the apparent area of contact. Apparent area of contact means which is not in exact contact. Real area of contact means the contact between the asperities or the tip of the asperities or tip of the asperity with the surface of the other material like that. Okay. So, here when the rubbing starts, when the rubbing starts, the tip of the asperities will going to rub first whatever the projected parts on the material, on the mating surface will going to rub each other first. Then after the deformation of this asperities, after the deformation of this asperities, then the next uh, asperity comes into picture because the height of this asperity is uh, uh, more compared to this one. So when this asperity, when this rub with each other, these two will going to deform first. After these two deforms, then this asperity comes into picture with this one. Okay. After this deforms, then this asperity comes into picture. After all the asperities uh, deforms, then you will find the real area of contact between this particular part to this one. So, so the area of contact, the real area of contact will be increasing with the increase in the friction because there will be deformation while rubbing, while rubbing there will be deformation, deformation means there will be wear of the particles, wear out of the particles thereby reducing the height of the asperities, when the height of the asperity reduces then the area of contact is starts increasing. 
So this is what the first law, first law states that the friction is independent of the apparent area of contact where this is the apparent area which is not in contact where this is only the real area which is in contact, this is only the real area which is in contact. So the dip of the asperities will be in the contact, okay. So if you just have a look at these two, so my hand will be having some projections like this. So this you can uh, consider it as asperity whereas this again you will consider it as asperity. So if I do it something like this, you can see the difference. At this particular position there is no contact but only at these two positions there will be contact like this. So the real area of contact is only these two. This is the apparent area of contact. You can try it yourself like this. Okay. So that is what it is explained in the first law. Now in the second law it states that the frictional force is directly proportional is directly proportional to the normal load it is directly proportional to the normal load acting at the contacting surface. So you can uh, uh, start doing an exercise like you can rub your hands together. So if you rub your hands together like this without application of any load, you will not find the increase in the heat between the rubbing surface. But if you start rubbing your hands with increasing the load with by pressing the hands and if you just start rubbing the hand, you will feel the heat. Okay, you will feel the heat if you press and rub. If you do not press, only if you start rubbing for a few amount of time, you will not find any heat generated in between because the friction will be very low if you do not apply any load. If you increase the load or if you increase the pressing of the hand and if you start rubbing the hand, then the heat, you will feel the heat. This explains that the frictional force is directly proportional to the normal load what you are applying, what you are pressing the normal load. It is directly proportional to the normal load between the contacting bodies. Okay. Again, this also explains uh, the third law that the kinetic friction is nearly independent of the speed of the sliding. So if you do not apply any load, if you just, just try to rub your hand without application of any load, then you will not find any heat. So if you not find any heat means there is no friction is happening, significant friction. I will not say Friction will not be there, zero fr uh, friction, but no significant amount of friction will be happening if you just rub your hand without application of any load. So if you increase the speed also, you will not find any heat, but only if you apply the pressure, only if, if you apply the uh, load like this, okay, when you press the hands and then you start rubbing, then only you will feel the heat. So it is only depending on the normal load, the pressing, not on the velocity or the speed of sliding. So this is the loss of friction, where the first two laws are introduced by amontons and the third law is introduced by coulombs. Okay, the next topic is coefficient of friction. So the second law states that the friction is the frictional force is directly proportional to the normal load between the contacting surface. Okay, so frictional force is directly proportional to the normal load. Therefore, F, if I take F as the frictional force is directly proportional to the normal load, I will take W as the normal load. Here, F represents the frictional force at the contacting surface, W represents the normal load what I am applying or it is externally applied load. So we know that F is directly proportional to W according to the second law of friction. So to take out this uh, proportionality sign and if, you, if I want to introduce uh, equality sign then I need to introduce a constant therefore F is equal to mu into w where mu is a constant which is called as coefficient of friction mu is a constant which is called as coefficient of friction therefore mu can be written by f divided by w f divided by w where f is the frictional force it is the force therefore the unit of force will be newton divided by w is the applied load the 
unit of load will be again Newton. So unit Newton Newton get cancels. So you will end up with a dimensionless number which is a constant. Therefore mu is a constant here which is called as coefficient of friction. So coefficient of friction will be <coughs> a constant for a particular material to material contact like uh, aluminium to aluminium or steel to steel or copper to copper and for any one of the ambient or the said ambient condition. So the coefficient of friction varies uh, with the material if you start rubbing the aluminium with the steel if you start rubbing the aluminium with the copper the coefficient of friction need not be the same it need not be the constant so coefficient of friction will be constant only for a uh, set of uh, same material and for the said operating condition or the ambient condition it varies with the ambient condition and also it varies with the material of rubbing okay so we'll start with the addition theory of friction so addition theory of friction is explained by uh, the Bowden and Tabor therefore this theory is also called as Bowden and Tabor theory of friction okay so it will again start with uh, the mating surface here two rubbing surface are considered this is uh, the material one and this is the material two these two are in contact so for the naked eye it will uh, something look like this but if I exaggerate at this particular uh, point if I uh, take the lens of the scanning electron microscope in the magnified version it will something look like this where you will find some asparatus the tip of the asparatus will be in contact with the tip of the asparatus of other material so here it is the real area of contact these are all the real area of contact and these are all the apparent area of contact okay so since this is the real area of contact again if you uh, just magnify or zoom this particular uh, position will look some it will look something like this where the pressure will be applied from this part to this one it will not be exactly sharp okay yes, it will not like exactly sharp if you zoom it, it, it you will find something like this where the pressure will be distributed throughout the contracting surface from here to here the load what you are applied here w will be distributed at the real area of contact as the pressure therefore you can relate this w with the pressure uh, at the real contact area like this w is equal to a into p naught or p naught p naught is the pressure due to the yielding pressure due to the yielding of the real contact at the real contact area so pressure is we know that pressure is uh, newton per mm square that is load by area pressure is load by area or load is equal to pressure into area therefore area is equal to load by the pressure so these things i can relate pressure and load so pressure is nothing but load by area or area is nothing but load by the pressure okay so this is at the static condition this is at the static condition i have not move uh, moved the surface yet now I'll going to apply the load. I'll going to apply the load something like this force F and force F. <coughs> so when these two surfaces are subjected to tangential force, this will start rubbing like this. This will sli start sliding like this. When it is slides like this, it will going to rub the surface. So I will applying the force F like this. When I apply force F like this, this tip of the asperity of the second material will going to shear off the tip of the asperity of the first material all or the tip of the asperity of the first material will going to shear off the tip of the asperity of the second material like this okay where this tip will be deformed under deformation so when this tip will be under deformation the real area of contact start increasing the real area of contact start increasing so there you will find some shearing effect here shear force comes into picture whenever a member is subjected to tangential force therefore shear will denoted as tau where we know that shear force for a rubbing surface or shear force whenever a member is subjected to a tangential force is written by f by a 
f by a. So we can write rewrite this equation as f is equal to tau into a. f is equal to tau into a. Now substitute for a here. A is W by P naught. Substitute F is equal to tau into W divided by P naught. Then again rearrange the term. Take W this side. If you take W to the left hand side, F by W is equal to tau by P naught. Tau by P naught. Where what is F by W? From the coefficient of friction, we know that F by W is mu. Mu is F by W. So I can substitute f by w is equal to mu, where mu is f by w or it can be tau by p naught. Okay. So with this expression, you can say that the frictional force is independent of the apparent area of contact. You will not find any area term here. It is independent of the area, apparent area of contact, or it is. Uh, depending on the friction or coefficient of friction coefficient of friction is depends on the force as well as the load or the shear force and the pressure okay so this is the coefficient of friction so here tau normally tau the shear force will be uh, uh, one fifth of uh, p naught that is p naught by 5 the pressure at this surface due to the static load <coughs> static uh, condition divided by 5 will be the shear stress therefore if you substitute this here 1 by 5 is uh, 0.2 you will find mu is equal to 0 0.5 0 0.2 in normal cases okay it may vary but in normal practice uh, we will uh, try to substitute mu is equal to 0 0.2 or 0 0.25 0 0.22 0 0.23 like that okay then Look at here, there are two forces applied. One is normal to the member like this and another one is parallel to the member. Okay, There are two forces uh, applied here. One is perpendicular to the member and another one is parallel to the member. So you will find combined loading here. So combination of the normal load, perpendicular load as well as combination of shear. So here the combination of uh, compression load as well as shear, therefore it is a combined load case. Whenever there is a combined loading takes place, then you just uh, have to rearrange this formula to get the area of uh, the mating surface which will be under the combined loading, something like this, area square is equal to W by P naught whole square plus alpha into F by P naught whole square, where the first term is the area when it is in the static condition or when the W load is applied normal to the member then F by P naught is the area this one F divided by P naught is the area when the member will be under shear okay so this is what the area you will find when the member is in the combined loading case.